Welcome to the Boxing Gossip Channel. Please hit subscribe if you are new. Many thanks as always for choosing to watch. Tomorrow night we see the return of Kel Brook on an Eddie Hearn card in Sheffield. Now it's very unfashionable to you know, ever praise an Eddie Hearn card. Um, maybe this isn't the strongest card in the history of boxing, but I'll be honest and say that it is one that I'm looking forward to. The main event, Kel Brook versus Rabchenko. I'll give you my thoughts on that in just a second. But there's some competitive action on the undercard, including Dave Allen, Lenro Thomas, and including Gavin McDonald versus um, Gamalia Fai. Now, some of these fights, people may argue they don't represent the highest class of boxing in the world. And, you know, maybe that's true. But nevertheless, some of them are competitive fights. I believe Dave Allen, Lenro Thomas is very competitive. I believe Gamalia Fai, Gavin McDonald is potentially very competitive as well. And, you know, whilst it may not be world title level action, um, it's certainly one that I'm going to be interested to watch and certainly one that could be fairly close for boxing fans. Um, I've watched the video uh, the videos of the weigh-ins today. So ahead of, um, uh, you know, ahead of fight night tomorrow, we get to see how all the guys are looking in, looking and, you know, how they're weighing in. And perhaps that's most relevant with Kel Brook fighting at 154 pounds, testing the waters in a new weight division. You know, looking at Kel Brook at the scales, he didn't look like he massively increased in size. You know, he didn't look a uh, dramatically different physique to the Kel Brook we've seen in the past or a Kel Brook that we've seen at 147. Um, but he did look uh, happier than I've seen him before. He did look slightly less drawn than I've seen him before. And all in all, he looks in relatively good nick as he steps into the ring with Sergei Rabchenko. Now, people asking me for a prediction on this fight. I haven't done a separate video on it, although I did discuss it on the podcast this week. Really, I find it hard to pick Rabchenko to beat Kel Brook, and in quite uninspiring fashion, I'd be going for the Kel Brook victory here. Um, I don't know a huge amount about Rabchenko. I've watched a little bit of footage on him this week. I've watched him fight Ryan Rhodes, uh, I've watched him fight Anthony Mundine. Um, I had a look at that more recent fight where he lost. Um, and I, I'm uh, just trying to remember who it was that um, he lost against. Let me just um, let me just box track it. I'm trying to remember the one I saw. Um, Tony Harrison, that's the one. So I've had a, a little look at Sergei Rabchenko. Um, there are, of course, doubts over Kel Brook. He's coming in off back-to-back -back losses, both stoppage losses, both losses where he's taken a bit of a beating, and both losses where he's sustained notable injuries. Um, so there are real reasons to doubt Kel Brook on his return to the ring. Um, but when I look at Rabchenko, I see a very solid fighter, a guy who doesn't look to have world-class strengths, but also doesn't look to have gaping weaknesses, but a guy who is probably outgunned by Kel Brook in terms of power, and a guy who, perhaps more importantly, is outgunned by Kel Brook in terms of speed. Rabchenko, for me, he's got the look of someone who may be ever so slightly basic in there, ever so slightly route one, a bit one-dimensional. He's got a fairly classic style. Um, you know, he's got some relatively decent wins on his resume, wins over the likes of Bradley Price, uh, Ryan Rhodes, which I've talked about. You know, he is a guy who can clearly get the job done at a certain level, and he's he's had success... Uh, you know, coming to the UK previously, so not someone we should be writing off. He also beat uh, Martin Concepcion in the UK. He also beat Kevin McCauley in the UK. You know, he's uh, beaten Cedric Vitu in the UK. So this is a guy who can travel. This is a guy who, yeah, maybe has been brought in as an opponent in the past and has upset the apple cart. But really, if you look at his resume, it is slightly short of the top level names. Um, probably the most recognisable guys he's been in with, the likes of Tony Harrison, the likes of Anthony Mundine, he's lost. Um, and he's come up slightly short. And I suspect that'll be the same again with Kel Brook. I think Kel Brook is going to have a real advantage in this fight in terms of movement. I've heard Kel say in the run-up to the fight that he's going to look to use his feet a bit more and try and dance a bit more in the fight. And I think if he's able to do that, that will um, you know, show a big gap between him and Rabchenko. And I just think Kel Brook is a lot sharper boxer who has a bit more variety, a bit more speed, a bit more power, a bit more precision and a bit more class. So I'm going for Kel Brook to win the fight. It's a decent comeback fight, but I think the levels may show. 
Um, you know, reasons to have doubt over Kell Brook, absolutely. But let's not forget the performance Kell Brook put on in the first half of that Errol Spence fight. That told us that he retained a lot of ability and a lot of class following on from the win. Sorry, following on from the loss to Gennady Golovkin. You know, even though that Errol Spence fight didn't pan out for Kell Brook in the second half, even though he sustained an injury in it, he still showed enough in that Errol Spence fight um, to let us know that he's still a capable operator on his day. Um, on the undercard, funnily enough, I actually find uh, some of the undercard fights a bit more compelling, so I see them as more competitive. Had a look at the guys at the weigh-in today for Dave Allen and Lenroy Thomas. Both in better shape than first time round. Uh, Lenroy in, in noticeably better shape. Lenroy um, been in Deontay Wilder's training camp, presumably helping the champ get ready for uh, Luis Ortiz. Obviously now working with Kenny Porter as a full-time trainer. For me, I think Lenroy's win over... David Allen has kind of seen him take that, that transition in his head from, you know, contender and opponent to someone who considers themselves as actively having a career in boxing and wanting to chase their own boxing dreams again. And I think Lenroy is coming to this fight with the mentality of a defending champion looking to confirm the form of the first fight. I think he's taken this fight, um, you know, knowing that he had substantial advantages over David Allen in the first fight and knowing that with the benefit of a full camp and with the benefit of a, a class trainer and Kenny Porter behind him, he could really give Dave Allen a bit of a beating. You know, David Allen, he looks fitter. He looks like he's taking things very, very seriously. Uh, I'm unclear about his training setup, though. I'm unclear, you know, what he's doing to actually rectify some of the boxing fragilities in his game. You know, some of the the technical deficiencies about how he judges reins, about how he constructs his punches, about the lack of a jab. And I think those are the areas that Lenroy Thomas is going to have a real substantial advantage. I think the improved shape from Lenroy suggests he may be even more determined and going to have a higher output than first time. So looking at the weigh-ins today, if you're thinking that Lenroy Thomas may pull the upset, you're probably going to be encouraged. Um, Gamalia 5 versus Gavin McDonald, a fight that is getting a few people talking in the trade, certainly. Uh, Gavin McDonald, we've always known he's a big, big guy, big lump for that weight. Real substantial size advantage over Gamalia 5. You know, Gamalia 5, a bit more compact, a bit more powerful. Potentially that will play into his style. Gavin McDonald, long, rangy, a bit like a sort of daddy long leg spider, I guess you could say, in terms of his physique. Um, McDonald's job is going to be to get on his bike. It's going to be to use his experience and it's going to be moving and frustrating and spoiling against the younger, potentially greener, but talented Gamalia fight. Um, it's an interesting fight. In many ways, it kind of, for me, strikes me as a fight that could go... Uh, could you know there could be some similarities between Zelfa Barrett and Ronnie Clark the other day you know Gamalia Fai like Zelfa Barrett a guy who's been talked about as a future world champion a guy who's uh, competed at quite a low level um, but sort of breezed through that level to date um, you know Gavin McDonald like Ronnie Clark someone with a bit more experience someone who's a bit battle hardened a bit battle tested maybe not known as a world class fighter maybe not known as a, a devastating puncher. Um, but someone who's really, really solid and proven at a certain level that their younger opponent is not yet at. And I think that could be a competitive fight. You know, it's either going to be a fight where Gamalia Fai announces himself as someone who can potentially go on to that world championship standing, or uh, as someone who needs to go back to the drawing board and there's actually still a lot of work to do. I don't know the answer. I see that as a close and competitive fight. I certainly have it more competitive than the bookmakers do. So I think it could be an interesting fight on Saturday night. Um, uh, interesting night of fights even and I'm not even getting on to the Deontay Wilder Lewis Ortiz stuff in this video which we've already covered elsewhere so my brief takeaways from the way in Kell Brook looks good at 154 you can see him looking a bit happier you can see him looking a bit fuller and less strained that's a good sign that's what we like to see um, every reason to believe that Kell Brook at 154 is worth another chance and you know got, a, got another potential future ahead of him in, in my humble opinion uh, Lenroy Thomas come in in good nick as has David Allen but Lenroy Thomas probably the more noticeably so of the two uh, I have real concerns over David Allen going into this fight maybe he's just about got enough toughness and enough grit to grind out a win um, but I really do suspect that a fitter more determined Lenroy with Kenny Porter training him full time um, will be able to re-establish the boxing advantages he showed over David in the first fight and I think that could be a struggle Gamalia Fai, Gavin McDonald, that's a fight I'm kind of on the fence on. Um, head is probably telling me to swing to your Fai. 
Looking at the weigh-in today, McDonald's a lot bigger. Looking at Zelfa Barrett, Ronnie Clark last week, we saw you know how much the benefit of experience and the benefit of proving yourself at a certain level over many years can, can be. Uh, that's one that could go right down to the wire as well. Some interesting fights last night, next, uh, tomorrow night. Maybe not the most glamorous card in the world, but one that I personally am very much looking forward to. Give me your take on these fights. Give me your take on the weigh-ins. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you've enjoyed the video. Please hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. We'll be sure to cover these fights on the channel over the weekend. So if you want to hear post-fight reaction, hitting subscribe is the best way to do that. As always, thanks for tuning in.